do you accept and do you now see perhaps that the government has put as much as it can ideology aside and this is, you know, different times that we find ourselves in? Uh, absolutely, Laura. I think the, uh, the government, importantly, has responded very flexibly, uh, which it needed to do. Um, it was really important that um, it, it put aside ideology and that it looked at what worked. And I think that was the expectations, the legitimate expectation that Australians had and Australian businesses had as well. So um, thus far, it's been it's been a pretty successful strategy. Um, where there has been criticism, uh, it's, it's listened to that and it's responded flexibly. And that's all you can really expect at this time. I think the key thing now going forward, Laura, will be uh, how much it can leave aside ideology in starting to uh, look at fixing the economy coming out of this and, importantly, starting to pay down the debt. Yes, and we're starting to see some itchy feet, if you like, in the business community. Richard Goiter on the front page of The Australian calling on uh, this hibernation strategy and the, the wind back of shutting down businesses to happen sooner rather than later. Look, I would argue that they don't have to so uh, take into the health aspects of this uh, so much and the government and the National Cabinet is, are the ones, uh, are the leaders who see both sides of this equation and it's a difficult ba balancing act but you've got to bring the public with you. You need compliance, and if the public thinks you are going too far and it's not necessary, you're not going to get that compliance. Oh, exactly right, and that's the real balancing act. I think uh, Australians have clearly responded um, very, very favourably and well in terms of the instructions from health professionals and governments thus far. I think that challenge for governments from now on is going to get that much more difficult because, yeah, in some ways, we've almost been a, it's almost been a product of our own success here with that low transmission rate and the low death rate in Australia that Australians really don't have too much experience dealing with people who have had COVID-19 and seen how bad it can get. So the challenge now for government is going to be to actually say, no, we need to maintain the discipline, particularly around those restrictions and those restrictions around businesses operating. Uh, clearly, there's going to be flexibility within the National Cabinet and the Federation for some states to move forward. And you've heard a bit from uh, Gladys, the New South Wales Premier today, that they're going to sort of take it a month at a time. Uh, but we are going to need to sort of see, in due course, some of those restrictions come back so the economy can start to open up again and we can look at making sure we get people back into work. No one is comfortable with the level of debt that we are in at the moment and we are going to find ourselves in in the years ahead. And I think the, the coalition government, a Liberal government, probably the most at the top of that uh, list of uh, being uncomfortable. But we don't really know if there is a strategy to pay down this debt. Um, you kind of wouldn't expect the government to be fully concentrating on that at the moment in the midst of this crisis. But... I mean, where do we go from here? Uh, is this just a, a generational burden that we're going to have to carry? Well, look, I mean, it almost certainly is, regardless of what the government does. Um, I, I, think the, I think the government needs to sort of um, capitalise on the fact that there is a fair bit of goodwill in the community right now for the way it's handling things and the strategy thus far. There's an opportunity here over the next six or 12 months for the government to put aside some of those things, um, which it's, it's, you know, thus far uh, not been comfortable taking up, things like reforms to negative gearing and capital gains tax and, dare I say, even franking credits, use this kind of almost this once-in-a-generation opportunity to put some of these reform, tax reform packages, productivity-enhancing reform packages back on the table and strike a new accord, if you like, with uh, the state governments and with the unions and with business more broadly, take everybody with you and start to repair some of the debt and uh, lift the economy and get people back into employment. There's always opportunity in a crisis and the better politicians among us will, will definitely be taking advantage of that. James, do you see perhaps a silver lining here uh, where uh, maybe the inefficient taxes are uh, gotten rid of, uh, perhaps, that there is more cooperation between the states at, at a federation level? Look, Hats off to Prime Minister Morrison with the formulation of the National Cabinet. It's clearly worked really well, and you have seen almost that unprecedented level of cooperation between the Commonwealth and the states. Uh, it'll just be now, I suppose, as we come out of this, hopefully over the next six months, um, what is the appetite, what is the political risk appetite to take on some of these... Um, these really difficult reform projects in Australia. And, and that goes to the GST. That's a really tricky one. But also broad-based land tax, perhaps replacing stamp duty, um, looking at all these big tax reform 
projects at the Commonwealth level and the state level. Uh, there is an opportunity here. There really is. And I think business and Australians will be expecting uh, a really clear pathway out of this and the economy picking up again. We expect nothing better, uh, nothing less from our leaders and our decision makers. So they should use this, this almost this once in a generation opportunity to get it right, to have these difficult debates and to make these difficult, put these difficult decisions in place.